Welcome back. In this clip, we are going to talk about the creation process of the particles and we are also going to control the flow of the particles along the tornado. So first of all, I like to begin from the FX menu and inside the end particles. Still, we are going to use the classic particles because, you know, there are some little issues while, you know, using the end particles in this particular effect. So that's why I'm not going to use the end particles. I'm going to use the, you know, legacy particles. So first of all, we are required to create the amateur and it can be anything. It can be directional or omni. You can go for omni, hit the option create and make sure that you just position this near around the topmost section of the tornado. All right. Now, if I'm going to play the timeline, you can notice that, yes, now the particles have just started, you know, emerging out from this ammeter in an omnidirectional way because the type is the omni. Let's first of all increase the rate to approximately, let's say, 500. And let's also do one more thing that, you know, we are working in 24 FPS, but I would like to go with 25. Okay, that's just a personal choice. Some of you may also wish to go for 30, no problem. So let's rewind the setting to 150 and 150, nice. Now let's just play that once again, all right. And now the thing is, how are we going to make the particles flow or follow along the, the geometry or you can say the shape of this NURBS geometry? For that, we are required to take the advantage or we are required to take the help of the goal. Goal is basically a command over here. So let's select the particles and select the surface and inside the end particles, we can pick the goal. Go to the option box and make sure we have a goal width set to the one. Hit the option create, all right? Now if I just play the timeline, you can see particles are still there, but they are just coming in a very, very, you know, different manner, which is absolutely, you know, we are just not able to fulfill our requirement. Let's also do one thing. Let's change the background color and let's also hide this geometry for a while. And you can see that these particles are exactly, you know, placing them or repositioning themselves based upon the control vertices of, you know, the individual control vertices of that NURBS geometry. And that's actually the very default nature of the goal. All right. So let's do one thing. Let's, you know, select the particle, press the attribute editor and let's add some you know per particle additional attributes that can help us in controlling the UNV flow of the particles by UNV I just want to say that the UNV direction of that NURBS geometry or you can say the parameterizations of this NURBS geometry all right so let's go down and over here inside the per particle array attributes we have the add dynamic attribute sections click the general and move to the particle sections Make sure that you click the goal U and goal V, hit the option OK. All right. So the goal U and goal V are going to control the flow of the particles based upon the, you know, parameterizations or the surface or you can say the UV values of that NURBS geometry. And you remember we have already set that value, which is, you know, min range 0 and max range to the 1. All right. So that's the advantage. Now we are going to get with this. So let's do one thing. Let's add a simple ramp to control the, you know, the vertical motion of the particles. So I don't know what exactly it's goal V or goal U. Let's start with the goal U, no problem. Simply add a ramp and just go to the edit ramp properties. Delete the middle color entry list. And let's the, let the interpolation be remain linear. Now let's play the timeline and see what we are getting. All right, so we are getting a different motion that we don't want. So let's do one thing. Let's come back and delete the array mapper. Let's add the ramp in the goal V. So we can still use the same ramp. All right, we can use the ramp one, hit the option. Okay. Now, if I just play the timeline, you can see, okay, that was, you know, way too much fast. And you know, it's quite opposite. Right now, if I just gonna bring back the tornado, you can see that your particles are, you know, basically, you know, coming from the bottom. That's the opposite effect. So we can easily fix this. We just need to go inside the ramp. Simply right click over here, array map or one, out value per particles, go to the edit ramp, and you can just, you know, flip the directions. All right, so that is a zero, that is a one, and I think to the 
zero value is from the top and one is at the bottom and now if you're just gonna play you notice that yes now your particles are coming from top to the bottom let me just gonna hide this once again but you know notice one thing the speed is way too much high because there is a clear-cut reason for that and the reason is that you know by default it takes the constant value so the lifespan of the particles is one so it means that all the particles you know have to cover the distance of that entire you know geometry within a maximum you know frame range of 25 because here lifespan 1 which is 1 representing 1 second and 1 second is equal to 25 frames so if you just notice carefully you know once the particle you know come back to the range of 25 they have just you know completed their journey from 0 to the 1 so that's way too much fast so we can just put the value to the 6 now if you just multiply the value 6 to the 25 you'll get 150 frames so it means that now your particles are going to you know come to the bottommost section of the tornado at the range of 150 well that's quite good and if you still want it to be a little bit more slow then you can experiment you can take it take the value to 200 frames or 250 frames whatever you wish to have all right now let's do quickly let's also manage the goal v or i'm sorry the goal u and we can just you know add simple expression so just click the creation expression over here and in the creation mode that is you know the expression works only during the birth of the particles we can give a random value let's add a rand value 1 comma 0 so it means from the horizontal section particles can be from anywhere all right so now if I play the timeline you'll see we have this beautiful motion but there is still one problem first of all I'm sure that now you must have understood what I'm just trying to say well by using the random expression 0 to 1 it clearly says that you know the particle you know whichever particle is coming from this range that is you know the horizontal section of this the the tornado nerves geometry surface the particles can appear anywhere between the range of 0 to the 1 so for example the particle appears at the range of 0.5 so this particle you know is coming you know downward so right now we are using 500 particles every second so you every particle has its own individual different direction so as a result of that now you're getting a, a good you know scattered particles as well as a nice motion but there is still one problem and the problem is that the particles are just not able to maintain the spiral motion I mean they're just coming straight no one can say that it's actually the effect of the tornado because in case of the tornado there's a kind of interesting you know spiraling of the motion or you can say the twisting of the motion of the particles which is not taking place there is a reason because you know the expressions which we have already used in the creation mode that is the particle shape one dot goal u is equals to the rand value zero to the one that is for the creation that is only for the time of the birth we just need to use that for per frame so that is just a one click you know solution we are just required to go to the goal u use the option create expressions just need to move to the runtime that works for every single frames so you can bring it back over here and let's say for every frame we want an incremental value of let's say 0 0.01 or maybe let's say 0 0.025 all right and hit the option create i think the 0 0.025 may be a higher value so we can still revisit the settings now if i just gonna play the timeline you can see that yes now wonderfully these particles are now forming a very beautiful you know twisting motion but as I said already, you know, the value is still a little bit higher. So we'll come back and let's just increase, just decrease, I'm sorry, to the value of 0 0.015. And I hope so that can be a good start. Yes, that's absolutely fine. So that's just all about this clip. Now in the next clip, I'm going to show you the creation process of the secondary particles from the first particles. And I'm, and I'm also going to give you the reason that why I'm, you know, adding the external or you can say the additional second particles to the existing particle one alright I'm sure guys you must have picked up this thing now let's move to the next clip <laughs>